And then that trick again where I was showing you about taking your finger. Some dogs wouldn't want you to do it that way. You could just pull it back like that. But all of my dogs are groomed very regularly and have been since they were small. So I can pretty much do anything I want to with them. That's just, um, I guess you'd say food for thought. The more you groom your dog, the better it will get. The sooner you start grooming your dog, the better it will behave. If you do something and it doesn't want you doing it, please don't stop. You might give it a break, but always go back and finish what you set out to do because all you're doing is setting a pattern for bad behavior. Now we have a clean face. A couple of things that I'd like to talk about while we're here at this part of the dog's body. Um, I always hear people say, well, you know, my dog has terrible teeth. This bitch is six years old. She had her teeth clean about 10 days ago. We also spayed her, same as Jenna. And um, that's only the second time in her life that she's had them. I do use the OxyFresh product in the water. I do give them bully sticks to chew on. We're on a dry kibble with some raw and I do feed raw bones. But the main thing is, is that teeth health is very important. And when you say, well, my dog has terrible breath, that's what I want you to go and look at. I want you to look and see if there's any tartar on the teeth. The back molars tend to get more, and if there's tartar here, it can cause a lot of problems. I, I've groomed dogs for pet owners, and the teeth would actually be green. Um, what happens is if they continue to swallow that over a long period of time, then they could actually get an infection to the heart by swallowing this bacteria. So teeth health is very important for the dogs. And there are a variety of things that you can do, but if it looks like your dog is having problems with their teeth, don't hesitate to take them to the veterinarian. One of the things I would like to stress is that when you go to your veterinarian, ask them if they're using gas anesthesia. That is the norm now, and when years ago, when I was a veterinary technician, most all the anesthesia we used was injectable, and it was very hard on the kidney, kidney and liver. And now with the gas anesthesia, it's very safe. They wake up very fast. And if your veterinarian is not using gas anesthesia, I would strongly recommend you find another veterinarian. Okay, with the lamb cut, there are traditionally two types. One type is where they will take and kind of cut a V up into the chest and leave all this longer. I'm not particularly fond of that kind. They would they would leave the, the chest hair here and blend it into the neck, and then they would leave the legs longer and the body is closer. We're gonna talk about blades 
and they're different lengths. Seven F blade is usually what's used on a kennel clip, which is where the body is very close all over. I like to use, if I'm going to do a 7F body, I like to do a 5F leg. If I'm going to do a 5F body, I always use a 4F on the leg. The reason is, is it keeps the dog from looking like a stick dog. On a lamb cut, this particular dog, I'm going to do a, a 3F, which is a longer blade, and we're going to get started. No power. Why is there no power? It's always a good idea to keep your hand on your dog to keep it from jumping if you don't have it tied. Now what I do here is I'm going to go down on the neck and then I'm going to go under the body and later we're going to blend with the scissors. I'm going to stop at the shoulder because we're going to blend that with the scissor also. This dog had been in the kennel clip because she'd had a litter of puppies. So I like using what we call a V top knot. So I'm gonna put that back on this particular dog this, this time. And you stop at the wither with your V. And then you're going to want to just do an imaginary line here. And I'm going to put the noose on Skye's neck because she always likes to drop her neck. And you really want your dog's head up when you're grooming because it does make a difference. I would never leave a dog tied with the grooming noose if I stepped away from the table. Now this particular blade called a 3F, one of the thing about blades is the higher the number, the closer it goes, the lower the number, the longer it leaves the hair. This is probably one of my favorite blades because it does not make the dog look so stark when you clip it. However, the dog has to be completely brushed out in order for this blade to be an option. I'm going to come back here and I'll pick up what I started underneath from the front. She's missing hair here because of her surgery, so there's not a whole lot I can do about that. She has 11 week old puppies. And to here, I stop just in front of the back leg. And I'm going to come straight down the back to the tail. Now, what I see a lot commonly mistake made is some groomers will bring this way down to here. This is not what I would do. I usually, the hip bone is located right here and I usually go just inside the hip bone. Then we're gonna blend all this and you'll see that just in a minute. 
I will do this, go around the tail like so. And that saves me a little bit of scissoring time. I'm gonna do the tail. I like to use a little tiny V. Some people round them out. I just prefer the, the, the little V myself. And then usually the rule that I use on standard adults is just go a half inch to maybe an inch above the tail. I did not dock this dog's tail. Her tail is too short, which is probably a whole nother subject, but if you have a, if you've bought a dog from a breeder that does not know the proper length to be cutting on a poodle tail, I've done a lot of toys and miniatures where they have a two inch tail. That's not a tail. The correct length of a poodle tail should be Half the tail should be docked and a little bit over the half. So somewhere between a half and three quarters of proper docking. This dog's tail, like I said, is, is just about this much too short, but I have done dogs whose tails were this short. That's a dead giveaway for a poor breeder. Back when I first started raising standards, I was scared to dock the tails myself, and this dock was actually done by a veterinarian, so. Um, we learn to do it properly and we don't take them there anymore. <laughs> and do the other side. I'll go this way first. One thing about poodle hair is it grows every different way. I've done poodles that had cowlick. It didn't matter how you groomed them. It never came out the same way twice. And again, we're gonna pick up the leg. And then just smooth that way. Now we're done with the clipper part. Okay, what I want, I can't stress enough, and what I want everyone to understand is your comb is your best friend. Um, if you're gonna do scissor work or even clipper work, you wanna make sure that the dog is completely combed out. If it's not combed out, then you're not gonna get a nice result. This is the back leg that we're gonna blend and we're gonna blend some of this here too. And like I said, there's usually hair here, but with her spay and surgery and everything, I've just got to play it by ear and make it look the best I possibly can. And remember that we've talked about your scissors and how you should hold them. You could do this a couple ways. If you didn't feel accomplished with scissors, you could use a three and three quarter blade, which is just a little bit longer blade than this one. And then you would could do it all with a blade work. You can also use clip-on plastic combs, which is probably a whole nother video <laughs> on how to use those. But basically, when you groom a dog, you don't, you want it to look really like it's not been groomed. You don't want to see lines and in, in areas where you have clipper marks and sh scissor strokes. 
I like my dogs to have a little bit fuller leg. They just don't look quite so stark. This dog was done about four weeks ago. There's lots of people that pick the leg up, and it's okay to pick the leg up. Um, when I was trying to learn show grooming and would meet my friends that were helping me, I learned not to pick the leg up, and that makes makes it easier in some ways and harder than the other, but you will get a better look if you do not pick the leg up. And less is more. If you start out with just trimming a little bit, then you're not going to have and oops is what I call them where you went oh because you can always take more off but you can't put it back making your dog stand correctly is is very important a lot of people don't understand that but if your dog's not standing square on the table you're gonna get all different kinds of looks I always clean out on my females their vulva well. It keeps the urine from wicking up the hair and that's basically a personal preference. Some people don't want to see that part on their dog. That's fine. I'm more into what's good hygiene for my my dogs. I used to groom for a gentleman who never wanted me to cut the hair off of his dog's testicles and I used to think that was so funny. But that's what he wanted, so it was what I did. And usually on a back leg, I will pick it up. I do have shoulder problems these days, so. And if you just shake the foot like that, take all the hair off that you've scissored. You can also blow. But the main thing about scissoring to remember is that you have to practice at it. And the technique I was talking about, pretending like you're scissoring door frames and window jams, it really does work. Okay, we're going to go to the front leg now. Now, if you're going to do a front leg, the important part is to make sure their heads are up and I just usually hold my dog's head because if that head drops your scissoring is going to be different so you want the head up and you just hold your scissors at a slight angle so what it's going to do is blend and you're not going to see that line that was there before then we're going to let her step forward just a little bit and do the same thing here. So now you have a nicer fuller leg. I'm going to pick this foot up because this this is one of my tallest bitches. She's 26 inches tall and her legs are really long. And I was using the seven and a half, or you can use what they call a Gator 88. It's an eight inch scissor, but her legs are so long. I go to the 10 inch, which is why if you have standards, it's nice to have both sets of scissors. And I'm not, I don't want to take a whole lot off this leg because I want it to be longer and fuller. So I'm just getting sprigs. A scissor at the front, you can do like this and you can just go at an angle. And you're just 
clipping off the little wispies. And what I just did with the scissors then, that's a cheat method. Um, my daughter, who learned to show groom first and pet groom later, <laughs> she hates that method because in show grooming we always use the comb. But I'm going to tell you, that right there saves a lot of time. And if you get really good at it, it works just as well as the comb. Only, she didn't hear me say that. now we're going to go here and we're going to let her stand naturally and just scissor the inside whatever is sticking out we don't want to really change the shape of the leg we're just going to scissor just the little sticky outies and you can scissor this way or you can scissor this way just whichever way is the most comfortable for you. We, we learn to scissor this way. We learn to scissor this way. It's just whatever works for you. And then I'm going to hold her leg out. And I'll see the sticky outies that way. And now, generally what I'll do because that blade sometimes misses, is I'll go back in here and see if there's anything that I've missed. Which there's a few. Now we're gonna go to the head. Everybody starts there's different, but because I've done this what we call a V neckline, I'm gonna start back here because I want it all to blend in. So Start here. I'm going to come around here and catch anything that I miss with the clippers. One of my pet peeves, I've seen these top knots where they don't leave anything in the front. I understand from a pet person's standpoint that they don't want a lot of hair in the front, but they, I've seen it where they were shaved up to here and then the top knot starts. And I think the reason that's done is because the groomer doesn't really know how to get the top, lock, the top knot to look nice in the front without whacking off a lot of hair. So I hold my scissors at this angle and I just barely nip off the front. Now, that's getting the hair at the top, and it's not too heavy of a look, as you can see. To me, the, and it, they can see, you know, I, I've seen some top knots that were real severe and then the dogs could barely see out. But the problem is, is if you take all this out of the front, and we have a dog here that that was done with that we'll see shortly, then it really doesn't look very attractive. Come here, Sky. So since I'm right-handed, and this is, this is really funny, and a, a part that I will mention, all of my friends and I that groom, we always say, well, can you not ever get the top knot to match? I never have. I can get it very close, and I guess it has to do with right-handed versus left-handed. But one side will always look just a little bit different, and that's why. So if you're a right-handed person, it's going to look different than if you're a left-handed person. And I'm going to go this way down the side.
something else that will, will happen is you'll see when you do with the 4F, you'll see that you, it's the way the blade runs on the dog's coat, it's not always really even. So I always go back in and clean it up with my scissors. And it can be a little bit shorter and it'll, it'll blend back into the coat. I like tall top knots. I know a lot of people don't like them. So what we've got to do here is get in line with the V. Now this is an old trick. I do a lot of freehand scissoring, but I'm going to do this so I can show people what they can do. If you comb it all the way over here and just scissor up. And then do exactly the opposite. And scissor up. What you're going to get is this. I'm going to take a little bit out right here, not much. And then I'm going to blend this here. I'm going to bring her back around this way. And what will happen is when you stand the dog back up, you're going to see this right here. Okay, so when you put the dog's head up, now you get this little bevel, whereas if your head's down, you don't see it as much. So what you want to do Because you want it to be straight. You don't want it to be crooked. And now I'll drop her head down a little bit. And just barely scissor this. So that it blends. Because you don't want it to stop. You want it to flow. And that is a finished top knot. So up until this point, we've been giving you all kinds of tips on grooming your dog at home. And we actually had a opportunity to show you a not so good haircut. Jesse here has been having problems finding a groomer. And Jesse, just tell me what the problem is. Well, um, I like to keep my dog shaved down. Um, we live in a very hot area, and so I like her shaved down. I like her feet clean, and I like a, a somewhat short on the head. Um, but the problem is that I've been to like three or four groomers, and they they just there's something wrong with the and cut. And you don't know what it is. And but I don't know what it is. So maybe you can tell me what to look for. I'll show you what to look for. Stand up, baby. First of all, one of the things that we did in the video was we showed you about where to stop on the feet. And I think on this particular dog, this is where they should have stopped. So she's between a quarter and a half inch too far up on the leg. So it should be down to here? It should be 
we take our hands and we feel these bones right here mm -hmm. and then we draw a line straight across so actually I see, yeah. it should be about a half inch yeah. long shorter down on the foot yeah. than what it is that looks much better yeah the other thing is this is a cow clip this is um a very traditional clip but what happens is most people will take a blade and they do the whole dog in that blade this gives a real skin look if i were doing this dog i would do a 7f on the body and I would blend into the leg a longer leg, a 5F blade or possibly a 4F blade, where it's not gonna be so long that um, it gives Jessie problems because she does live out in the desert area, but it's gonna make her dog not look like she's walking on sticks. The most common problem I see is this head. This is um, quite different, I'll have to say, and there's really not a whole lot that you can do to fix this at this point because what they've done is taken off far too much from the front. I'm going to find a comb. So this part right here. Yeah, they're taking yeah, way too much weird. out. Yeah, that it looks, looks strange very strange. Me. So first of all, this is that brushing technique and I'm going to grab a brush. And then this will also show you the difference between I've brushed my dog now and I'm taking it to the groomer and it's all brushed out. But I always look at them and say, no, the dog is not brushed out. And they look at me like I'm crazy. But the dog really isn't brushed out, although they thought it was. And you'll be able to see the difference in the top knot that's brushed out and the top knot that's not. I think what this groomer has done, instead of coming up the side like we've shown before and coming around this way, they don't know how to get this in the front without taking it all out. I've actually seen groomers that would cut way up into here, very short band, a half inch across each eye, and that's how they were trying to keep the hair out of the eyes, but that's not correct. So I would have to say probably what this groomer has done is just went straight into the head. I can see that. The only, and over here, it's not even done evenly. I mean, I, I don't know what this is. This is just incorrect. I can possibly fix it a little bit, and this dog hasn't been freshly bathed, so it's not going to look exactly like it would if it was freshly bathed. But I can try to fix it to where it doesn't look quite so terrible. And what I would what I would suggest you do, Jesse, when you go if you go back to this person, is tell them, look. You're taking too much off the front. And then show them what I showed you. Okay. Comb it forward. Uh-huh. And then we always use the scissors at an angle like this. And uh. I'm going to try to do it like that so you can see it. What many of them do is they cut into the head like yeah, this. Yeah, that's what she obviously did. Did that. that. Because like it's, it's bluntly chopped back, okay? So what you need to say is, look, my groomer showed me, my breeder showed me, my groomer showed me that I use in the East Coast. And... She said, do it like this. Uh -huh. And then if they don't want to do it that way, I'd be hunting me another groomer. Yeah, well, it, I think I'm gonna hunt another groomer. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and now I'm gonna try to fix the back a little bit. What they do when they, when they do this top, kind of top knot, which is why I like the V top knot, where it's not so stark. The only problem with the V top knot is if you're using a nylon collar like this, you're gonna get a dent in it all the time. So instead of bringing the V all the way down to the shoulder, you could even in fact bring the V just to right here. It doesn't matter where you stop it, but the thing about this, number one, is it's not even, it's not even on either side. Um, and they stop right at the back of the occiput. And if it were me, I would have brought it farther down and blended it into the neck so that it doesn't look so obvious and then of course you see her what she's got here is her neck here is sticking out actually more than her top knot yeah 
So we're going to try to do this and maybe it won't look so terribly bad. It's looking better already. Oh yeah, that looks so. You can have a short top. You can knot have a short top and knot. It be done and right. be done right. It's just that a lot. I, I tell you, the really sad part for me about grooming is that the government doesn't control it like they do hair dressers for people. Uh -huh. And anybody can go out buy grooming equipment and say, "Ta-da, I'm a groomer." That doesn't make it so, unfortunately. So, you know, um, it's a sad but true thing. And the other thing I wanted to point out, because we had talked about the tail and how tails are done improperly, um, this tail is a really good example of that. They've come almost four inches up her tail. Now, if I'm going to do a kennel clip, I'm going to do a closer tail. I'm not going to... Um, make a big ball obviously because you would only do that if you had um longer hair coat but i will scissor it down some but um i'm not going to come this far down the tail i'm going to reset the line for jesse so that when she goes back to someone else she can say look this is where i want it taken down to it's okay baby stand up seems like this would be, um, even if a person didn't want to groom their own dog, this would be a good series to own so that you can know what What the difference yeah, is. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. And You're how, exactly how right. how should be, should look. Should look. Because I didn't know. I just knew she didn't look right. Right. You knew it wasn't like when she you got right. her from me originally. Exactly. Right. And I've had that a lot of times. I've had people go, I just hate you live so far away because I bought my dog and it looks so good and now... I can't find anybody to groom it like that. So, um, I've even seen it worse than this. I've seen it where they take it all the way up to here, yeah. and all you have is this little ball on the end. Yeah. And that's not how you make the ball. You make the ball by pulling all of the hair into the tail. So, we always go, and then they did this, which is, I don't like the straight across. I preferred the, the little V. They don't have to do that, but when you use the V, what will happen is that you will incorporate part of that two inch rule, which is always my rule. I don't go more than two inches, unless it's a dog with a really, really long tail. Um, if you use the V, it'll give you a better guide. If you just going straight across, you won't, you don't you won't have, have that guide. So, and, and actually what's even funnier than this is, this is a rectum here, which I only usually go on the back side of the tail an inch to possibly an inch and a half, but I usually leave more on the back side so I can scissor it out to make the tail round. They've got almost four inches taken off the back side of this dog's tail, so that's going to make it look really funny. And with her body this short, even this is too much tail because it looks like she's going down through there with a flag up. So what I would do, and this is how I do my tails, is I come down to the very end and hold it like this, cut it, then I'm going to hold the end of it, and then shape it. And I'm going to shape it because this tail has not been shaped at all. It's just basically I just cut it and whatever's left is left. It almost looks like they might have used a comb or something to run over it and then left a clip-on blade comb and left the rest of it. And now it doesn't look quite so odd. That looks better. Yeah. So, there's a few more tips for you. I noticed that I don't think that they did her toenails very well. Um, one of the things... They that, look long to you? They do look long to me. 
um, you see this wide part here? Yeah. All right, when it goes from wide to thick to thin here, yeah. they should have taken that off. Now, I don't know if she's had a Dremel put on her since she was here last, but we're gonna just nip the ends off and you'll see what I'm talking about. Well, first, let me get my glasses. Girl. So that is just a quarter of an inch that we nipped off and you're going to think, well, that's not a big deal. But watch when I put her foot back down. And obviously somebody's been cutting this dog's nails way too short or improperly. Otherwise she wouldn't be fussing like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she didn't do this when no, she left here. No. So either they hurt her or they've just not done it properly. But maybe we can see. Oh, that's so much better. Yeah. The difference in the foot. Yeah. And you yeah. see, this foot is almost this nail on this foot is almost touching the ground when she stands up. And this is what I was talking about, where if their nails are too long, they can't move properly. Eventually, it'll affect the way she puts her toes down on the ground. Then that's going to radiate up her leg and cause maybe shoulder or ankle or elbow problems where she's sore so it's the nails are very very important hi i'm annette shepherd and i would like to welcome you to my world of poodles which you can see my poodles at rebelstarkennels.com this is dr jesse Merce, and she sought me out to purchase a standard poodle for me in 2007 and i'm going to let jesse talk to you about her search for standard poodle puppies I had two large standard poodles, apricots, who died actually a year ago. Um, my boy died at the end of August and my girl two weeks later. They were, the boy was 13 and a half and the girl was 13. And of course it was extremely traumatic. And one of the things that I wanted to do was, while I knew I couldn't replace them, to find uh, a suitable poodle again. I searched everywhere in Canada and the United States. I called the AKC. I, I called I, maybe 30 or 40 poodle breeders. And I had a set of criteria that I wanted uh, the breeder to meet. And one of the things was that I wanted the breeder to feed only natural or organic foods to the puppies. I wanted uh, to make sure that there were no health issues with the puppies. I wanted to make sure that the puppies were raised in a home and not a puppy mill. Um, I wanted to make sure that the puppies had human interaction. 